interior of a classroom with a whiteboard, a few small desks and chairs, and a pulpit. The girl, second from the left, aged about 20 to 25, wearing a cherry red shirt, black blouse and skirt in the same color, on bare legs, black imitation leather or leather pumps with a small wedge heel. The young woman mostly sits and holds her legs in various positions, sometimes crossing her legs, and sometimes keeping both of them on the ground. Occasionally he takes his foot out of one shoe, more often he seems to get rid of the right one. Researchers have determined what temperatures prevailed during the last ice age. A team of researchers from the University of Arizona estimated the average temperature on Earth during the last glacial period, i.e. about 20,000 years ago. Years ago, it was around 7.8 degrees Celsius. During the last ice age, huge glaciers covered much of North America, Europe, South America and Asia. However, this did not stop the flora and fauna that adapted to the low temperatures. We have a lot of data on this period, it has been the subject of research for a long time, argues Professor Jessica Tierney from the University of Arizona. It's about answering one question that scientists have been wanting to know for a long time. How cold was the Ice Age? He adds, thanks to the research, climatologists better understand the relationship between the increase in the level of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere and the global average temperature. Tierney is the lead author of a nature paper that found that the average global temperature during the Ice Age was 6 degrees Celsius lower than today. The average temperature in the 20th century was 14 degrees Celsius, and in the Ice Age it was 7.8 degrees. It may not sound like a huge difference, but it's actually a huge change, says Tierney. Together with her team, the researcher developed maps illustrating temperature differences in different regions of the world. In North America and Europe, the northernmost parts of the land were covered with ice and very cold. Even in Arizona, it was very cold, says Tierney. But the greatest cooling occurred at high latitudes, such as the Arctic, where it was about 14 degrees Celsius colder than today, he said. New findings help understand how the poles respond to temperature changes. Climate models predict that high latitudes will warm faster, says Tierney. When we look at the forecasts, it's getting really warm over the Arctic. This is called Arctic amplification. During the Ice Age we find the opposite pattern. Higher latitudes are simply more sensitive to climate change and will continue to be so in the future, he adds. Knowing the temperatures during the Ice Age is important because you can use this data to calculate how much the global temperature is affected by carbon dioxide entering the atmosphere. Tierney and her team found that each doubling of atmospheric carbon content led to an increase in global temperature of 3.4 degrees Celsius. These figures fall roughly in the middle of the range predicted by the latest climate models, which predict that each such doubling raises the global temperature by 1.8 to 5.6 degrees Celsius. The level of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere during the Ice Age was about 180 parts per million, which is very low. Before the Industrial Revolution, this level increased to about 280 parts per million, and now it is 415 parts per million. Under the Paris Climate Agreement, Global warming should be kept to no more than 1.5 degrees Celsius above pre-industrial levels. But with rising carbon emissions, it will be extremely difficult to avoid 2 degrees Celsius of warming. Says Tierney. Since there were no thermometers during the Ice Age, Tierney and her team developed models that translated fossil data, mostly oceanic plankton, into sea surface temperatures. 
They then combined their own data with climate simulations of the last ice age. We used the climate model of the National Center for Atmospheric Research in Colorado to forecast weather during the Ice Age, updating this forecast with actual temperature data. In this way, we can recreate the climate of those times, argues Tierney. In the future, Tierney and her team plan to use the same technique to recreate warmer periods in Earth's past. If we can reconstruct a past time when Earth's climate was much warmer, it will help answer important questions about how our planet responds to really high levels of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere. Thanks to this, we will be able to predict how climate change will develop further, emphasizes the researcher. Traces of DNA from a yet unknown human species have been discovered in the human genome in the genetic code of humans. Researchers have found a fragment of DNA left by mysterious ancestors belonging to a yet unknown human species. Our ancient ancestors interbred, and this makes it difficult to unravel the increasingly complex history of our species' emergence and our migration out of Africa. In new research, scientists have found in the human genome much earlier traces of interbreeding with now defunct species, Neanderthals and Denisovans. But researchers found something else. Fragments of DNA that belong to a yet unknown human species. Perhaps this mysterious ancestor was Homo erectus, but no one knows for sure. The genome of this extinct species has never been fully decoded, says Adam Siepel of Cold Spring Harbor Laboratory, one of the authors of the new study published in the journal PLOS Genetics. New research shows that the ancestors of modern humans interbred with Neanderthals between 200,000 and 300,000 years ago, much earlier than previously thought. The best known similar crosses occurred about 50,000 times years ago, when large numbers of Homo sapiens migrated from Africa to Europe. These studies illustrate the complexity of human history. Evidence has long been accumulating that humans and Neanderthals interbred while both groups were in Europe. Thanks to this, many human genes come directly from Neanderthals. Thanks to the increasing amount of data on the human genome, and also sequencing older samples taken from ancient fossils, scientists have obtained a map of human interbreeding going back thousands of years. For example, some Pacific Islanders possessed DNA fragments derived from a mysterious ancient human species known as the Denisovan were trying to build a complete model of the evolutionary history of each segment of the genome, says Siepel. By using new computational methods, scientists are able to find various recombinations of the genome and trace how it ended up in DNA. It is these studies that showed Neanderthals mixed with Homo sapiens as early as 300,000 years ago. The analysis also showed that 1% of the Denisovan genome comes from an unknown human ancestor who lived about 1 million years ago. The new results are further evidence that the ancient and more modern lineages of the human species intermixed relatively often, says Siepel. What emerges is a picture of a series of distinct, but interconnected populations, moving around the world and interacting with each other a lot adds the researcher. The specificity of the diabetic foot. Diabetes is a condition in which the body cannot produce enough insulin or becomes resistant to it. Insulin is a hormone that helps cells use or store sugar as energy. If you have diabetes, your body will either not be able to produce enough insulin or will become less sensitive to it. This causes high blood sugar levels and can lead to serious health problems such as heart disease and nerve damage in the feet. 
The most common symptom of diabetes is frequent urination, which can make you need to go to the toilet more often than usual. Other symptoms include extreme thirst and hunger, unexplained weight loss, blurred vision, tingling or numbness in the hands and feet, non-healing cuts, and extreme fatigue. Some of the risk factors for developing type 2 diabetes include overweight or obese, having a family history of diabetes, 45 years of age or older, high blood pressure, smoking, drinking too much alcohol. Diabetic foot is a common complication of diabetes. It is characterized by inflammation, ulcers and gangrene. Diabetes increases the risk of diabetic foot complications 20 to 30 times. Diabetes can cause nerve damage in the feet, making it difficult to detect when feet are getting wet or cold. This leads to an increased risk of developing a skin infection on the foot, which leads to diabetic foot ulcers. Nerve damage also causes poor blood flow and poor feeling in the feet, making it difficult for people with diabetes to notice foot injury, which can lead to gangrene and amputation if left untreated. The best way to prevent diabetic foot ulcers is to avoid foot injuries, control your blood sugar levels, wear well-fitting shoes that provide good support for your feet, and see your doctor for regular checkups. The most common symptom of diabetes is increased thirst. Other symptoms include increased urination, blurred vision, tiredness, weight loss or weight gain, slow healing of cuts or sores on the feet, diabetic ulcers, tingling in the hands and feet, peripheral neuropathy, and numbness or pain in the hands and feet. Diabetes can also cause heart disease and stroke because high blood sugar levels can damage blood vessels in the body over time. It can lead to serious foot problems if not treated properly, such as diabetic foot ulcers, which are open sores on the foot caused by poor circulation. Diabetic foot is a serious complication of diabetes that can be life-threatening if left untreated. Diabetic foot is a chronic condition that causes numbness, swelling and pain in the feet. This is due to a reduction in blood flow to the feet. There are two main types of diabetic foot. Neuropathic and vascular. Neuropathy is caused by diabetes-induced nerve damage, and poor circulation is responsible for the blood vessels. Diabetic foot treatment can be done with or without surgery. Surgery may help if you have an infection or a limb below the knee or ankle has been amputated due to diabetes complications. Non-surgical treatments include the use of special footwear, bandages, pain medications, weight loss programs, and physical therapy. Diabetic foot ulcers are the most common cause of lower limb amputation in people with diabetes. Treatment of the diabetic foot, regardless of the stage of advancement, should be tailored to the individual patient and include good wound care and prevention of complications. This will help prevent or delay the need for amputation. Scientists one step closer to harnessing nuclear fusion. Thanks to the work of two research teams, we are getting closer to achieving the dream of controlled nuclear fusion. Scientists from the US and South Korea have developed a procedure to eliminate one of the main problems in achieving the goal, which is the instability that occurs in plasma. The second team managed to create a record strong magnetic field under controlled conditions. Nuclear fusion could be the key to clean, unlimited and cheap energy. This is the reaction that drives our sun. If this process could be recreated, millions of households could be powered with this energy. Humanity would ensure its energy security for years.
In addition, the process is environmentally friendly as no harmful by-products such as carbon dioxide emissions or radioactive waste are produced. One of the main problems in achieving nuclear fusion on Earth is reducing or completely eliminating the instability that occurs in the edge plasma, the so-called edge localized modes, ELM. The Sun releases huge pulses of energy in the form of solar flares. Similar ELM flares could potentially damage the reactor walls to control such explosions. Scientists perturb the plasma with small magnetic waves called resonant magnetic perturbations RMPs, which distort the smooth shape of the plasma, releasing overpressure, which in turn reduces or prevents the appearance of ELMs. The hardest part is producing just the right amount of this distortion to eliminate the ELM without causing other instabilities and releasing too much energy. The difficulty is that a virtually unlimited number of magnetic distortions can be applied to the plasma, making precise detection of the correct distortion an extraordinary challenge. At least it was until now. John Q. Park of the Princeton Plasma Physics Laboratory PPPL, in collaboration with other physicists from the US and South Korea, has developed a whole set of beneficial distortions to control the ELM without creating more problems. The kit was successfully tested at the KSTAR Tokamak in South Korea. The results of the research by a team of physicists have been published in Nature Physics. KSTAR was ideal for testing predictions due to its advanced magnetic steering to generate precise distortions, identifying the most favorable distortions, which are less than 1% of all possible distortions achievable in KSTAR, would be virtually impossible without a model developed by a team of American and Korean physicists. For a long time we thought that identifying all the beneficial fields was too difficult to calculate. But our work demonstrates a simple procedure for identifying a set of all such configurations. Park said the researchers reduced the complexity of the calculations when they realized that the number of ways plasma can be distorted is actually far less than the range of possible 3D fields that can be applied to plasma. Experiments at KSTAR confirmed the predictions with remarkable accuracy. Controlling the optimal fields will be crucial for the huge ITER International Thermonuclear Experimental Reactor, Tokamak being built in France. Researchers emphasize that in this Tokamak it will be possible to produce 10 times more energy than is needed to heat the plasma. But that's not the only big fusion-related discovery in recent days. Scientists from the University of Tokyo have managed to create a record-strong magnetic field. Researchers reported in review of scientific instruments that they obtained a magnetic field of 1,200 Tesla under controlled conditions indoors. By comparison, Powerful MRI machines used for medical research are several hundred times weaker. A refrigerator magnet is a quarter of a million times weaker. And the Earth's magnetic field is about 50 million times weaker. It should be noted, however, that this is not the strongest magnetic field created by man. The strongest magnetic fields were obtained by compression with chemical explosives. However, this method can only be used in the open and runs uncontrollably. Researchers from Tokyo have obtained a strong magnetic field under controlled conditions, which allows this method to be used in further research, including on the nuclear fusion process. The very process of nuclear fusion, to put it simply, consists in combining lighter nuclei of atoms into heavier ones. Inside the atoms there are huge amounts of energy that are released during such a reaction. However, this requires very high temperatures. For thermonuclear fusion, hydrogen must be heated to 100 million degrees Celsius.